uh, October 7th, 2016. This is uh, color mixing, color demonstration. So, <clears throat> so the first thing I'll show you again might be a little bit of review. So here's how I've got my palette set up. My blue is bleeding. Ah. All right. So I mentioned this last week, but just real quick, I've got my so my white. I was going to try to get this so I could show it on the camera. Once I do this, and then I'll stop dripping here in a minute. All right. You're going to use a little bit of paint today when you're, for your color mixing, so don't be afraid to get a little bit out. And you notice that I, when I put these piles out, I put them in sort of a, just a bit of a string, so that I can get a, a bit of it off of here, and then I don't have to dip into this whole thing and infect the whole thing. So I can just take a little bit off the end and then keep working up into the string of it, and then. And then we can mix because you're going to want to mix. You're going to want to use quite a bit of uh, a paint because you're going to be using this. And you're going to make. You're going to be making swatches up here as well. Excuse me, just a minute. All right. So. The idea is we're going to make a chart that's similar to this. This is kind of a big copy of it. And um, it doesn't have to be exactly this clean. You can make, I've got a chart here that works fine. It's got more lines of swatches that I put down here. But if you like to be clean, you can put tape down. You know, you can tape on your board grid off sections or you can just do piles or you can do s little circles or squares or just little swatches it doesn't matter but and you're also going to be putting on here on, on your handouts you can look at this on your handout this is on the back page it's pretty small in your handout but <clears throat> but these little acronyms underneath each one is telling you how that was mixed And what I'm going to demonstrate today, I'm going to demonstrate a piece of each one of these sections. You're going to be doing primary colors in both warm and cool. You're going to find out what's on your palette to understand what those colors are. We'll be adding black and white to each one to see what they do. Primary colors mixed with black and white. Um, secondary colors. Now, if you look at the color wheel, some of you have studied some color, maybe some of you haven't. Just review what are our primary colors, right? So we got, it's the outside, it's the outside I'm looking at. So red, yellow, and blue. Do you notice anything interesting about where they're located on the color wheel from each other? In it's in a triad. There's three of them. And so there's several colors between each of those. So those are your primary colors. Now the primary colors are followed by what we call secondary colors. From your studies, from other art classes, what are the secondary colors? Name a few of them. Purple, orange, orange green, and green. Because those are made from the primaries, right? Red and yellow. See if we just go right across from these triad. Right in the center of that is orange. Right between red and blue is purple. And then right between blue and yellow is green. However, when you start mixing primary colors from both warm and cool, you will get orange, green, and violet 
but they'll be very different. And that's what the second part will be where you're going to mix a number of secondary colors. You're going to come up with you're going to come up with four greens, four oranges and four purples. All right? So that's the, the instructions there. And then complementary colors. What are complementary colors? There's so many things we can talk about on the color, but we're only going to talk about these three. Primary, secondaries, and complementary. What are the complementary colors and why are they important to know? This, what's, what, what are they? <clears throat> so any of these colors that are opposite. So the complementary color of red is green. Ah, Christmas, right? I don't know if that's anything, but interesting. The complement of yellow? Purple. purple. The complement of blue? Orange. <clears throat> Orange. What happens if you mix those two together? They kill each other. They kill each other. It's very violent. I don't know if that's right. <laughs> no, actually, that's a, that's a real art term. We kill the color, or we desaturate the color. The colors are all saturated, meaning it's the true, pure color. We can desaturate the color several ways, and one of them by, is by adding the complement or, or a variation of a complement. Like if we had a red and we added, say, like a yellow green, will it still kill it? Yeah, but maybe not quite in the same way that actual green will. It'll go a little bit more to what color, plus it'll go a little more towards the orange side of things with the red. If we added blue green to the red, it would go a little more to the blue side, purpley kind of grayed out red. So you got a lot of power. I mean, if you start thinking about this, there's so many things you can do with just a few colors. All right, so <clears throat> let's just go through the... Um, and then by adding black and white, there's a couple of terms you'll want to know. When we add, when we add white to a color, we're creating a, if you guys know the term, it's a tint. Mm -hmm. We're tinting the color. If we're adding a dark or black, we're shading it. It's a shade. So tint and shade. All right, well, let's take a look at your, your handout here. It says here, Primary colors, warm or cool. Add black and white to each one. Make about one inch square examples of each color mixed. You can place all the colors in a grid-like pattern as we mentioned. So here we go. Primary colors with, mi with uh, mixtures of black and white. Now, if we look at how this student did it, they started with yellow and this worked along with yellow, red, and then the blue. So they got the yellow in the middle, the primary color in the middle, and on either side added the tint and the shade. So with one color, by adding white and black, you already got three different colors. And we could say they're different colors. They're different sort of a tint and a shade. Well, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to do that with both, both yellows. So first we have the yellow light or your Hansa yellow but this yellow light is, is just that. It's a very light yellow. This would be considered more like your, your cool yellow. Very light. So we're going to pull some of it out here because we'll be mixing into it a little bit. And you know, I'm just going to use my knife. You can use a brush. You can dip a brush into these and make swatch marks up here. But it's so, I just like it with a knife because it's so much cleaner. So I'm going to just take a, some of my yellow. I'm going to just put a swatch right there. And I'll show you why the nice thing about using your knife, and it doesn't have to be perfectly square, that's all right. You got the color up there. The nice thing about using the knife is because we're going to be going into so many colors and we don't want to, you know, bring other colors into others. You can just wipe your knife off with a rag. You don't even have to use your medium, or I mean your cleaner. So what we're going to do then is we're going to just add 
a little white. So I take over here and I tint that. You know, if we were really making a, an expanded color chart, what you would do is you would tint the white a number of steps. For example, I'll just show you right here. If we tint it that much there, and we take some of that and add more white, we keep getting these different shades of color of just that yellow. The value. We're tinting it, yeah. We're tinting the value of it. We're lightening it up. We're lightening it up, but what else is it doing to the color the more white I add? It's killing it, desaturating. So another way to desaturate or kill colors is to add white or black. But right now we're adding white. So, so then I'm going to take the one that I added white to and stick it next to it on this side. And I'm going to keep all these, by the way, because I'm probably going to go in and use them a little later for the mixing. So keep the pile there. Just wipe my knife. So be a little more systematic when you get into it. I'm kind of explaining things as I go. So I take a little bit of that same yellow and then I add some black to it. Probably added too much black. I didn't want to make, make it that much. So I'm going to take a little more of the yellow. But you're going to notice it makes this really interesting olive color. And then we could step that one closer to the black. If I took that, I could keep stepping it down. You can already see. It's really nice. This is an ivory black. And by the way, when I'm mixing with this knife, I like to mix it like this where I grab, I cut into the paint, and I press it down. And then I mix it on the front rather than like this. I feel like I get a better pressure on it like this and I use my and then I scrape it back and then when I want to lay it down and I just cut some on the back of this okay so there's your first primary right there with black or white you've already got three colors and again if we expanded these out which we won't but you could you'd have a variety of colors with one color now at some point you know once you get this going you're going to have you're going to start covering up a lot of areas of your of your palette. That's why I like this tool. Home Depot is my second art store. I love Home Depot. And this is that that razor blade that you used to, what to call these is the blade holder. So now I'm going to take um, well, let's uh, you get the idea, right? Let's just, so you do that, you do that with all of your primaries. You just go through each one. I'm going to just do, let's just do it with the uh, cad yellow. Because you'll see how different the yellows look when I add white or black to the cool yellow. And this is the, we call this the warm color, uh, warm yellow, sorry. So I mix it up and I can stick it, I don't know how he did on his, he did it right below. So. Stick it right here. So already, can you see how this one feels warmer? It's more intense, kind of a more intense shell. It's got less white in it. So I'm going to tint that one. And see how I'm just pulling off a little piece. That's why it's so nice to have a knife, because you just pull off a little piece that you need, and you're not getting all the paint into your big pile. You just take off what you need. And it's about equal. You'll notice that as you mix your black and white into these paints that you'll get sort of a real variety. Let's add a little more white to that just to make it pronounced a little more pronounced difference. It's not that different. That's better. So that's the lighter version of that. Now if we take that I'm going to clean my knife off. I like, I don't worry about using lots of paper towels. So I take some of this. Now let's see what this looks like with a little black. I'm not going to use as much this time. 
it's going to give me a little different, it's going to be sort of a warmer shade of yellow. And it kind of goes towards, sometimes people will use black instead of blue in a limited palette. Some people call it the Zorn palette after the painter Andrew Zorn. But you'll see now with, with both two yellows, we've got six colors already, six colors. So you can imagine if you go through and do this with each of your colors, okay, the red, the, the uh, crimson, the uh, two blues, the ultramarine, and the phthalo. So you're going to add white and black, and you're going to just put them up here. Some way, in some systematic way, I'll let you figure that out. You can go down this direction or this direction. You might end up using two of your boards to fill them all up. But before you get too far along, what you want to do is you want to leave some space underneath, and like this one is my, I'm going to call it CL or CY, be Cad Light or Cad Lemon or Hansel, like H. And this one down here is C, oh, I'm sorry, it should be Y. I forgot Y. <laughs> it's yellow. Come on, Rob. CYL, Cad Yellow Light, right? And then CYM, Cad Yellow Medium. And then this is CYM plus B, black. CYL plus B. And then over here, CYM plus W, white. You get the idea? And you're going to mark each one so that you'll remember how you come up with all these amazing colors because you'll go back and you'll go, oh, how did I mix that? I forgot. It was this and this. You're going to be using these colors. Okay, that's the first section on your primaries. So you've got six primaries, right? And you're going to add black and white to each of them. Any questions on that? Okay, let's move on to the next section. Let me just demonstrate that. Um, secondary colors. This is where it starts to get a little more exciting. So you're going to start mixing your primaries to create your own secondaries. And when you mix the primaries of both warm and cool in all the variations you can, you're going to have four different looking secondaries for each secondary. Four different looking greens, four different looking violets, and four different looking oranges. So you're, you're expanding your, your color amazingly so already. Which is, and I'm going to use the same colors I've got up here. So, for example, we've got cad yellow plus phthalo blue. Doesn't matter what you start with. You can start with cad yellow plus your ultramarine blue. Or cad yellow, you know, whatever. But Let's go, let's go with, and so I've already got some down here, right? So I can use this. So I'm going to take my CAD light, and I'm going to mix that with a little bit of my phthalo blue. But you've got to be careful with the phthalo blue, because the phthalo blue is really potent. It's really a powerful color. I hardly had just a little tiny, tiny dab on there. You can see that beautiful green it's giving me. Okay, so we got that. So we put that here. So I'm going to write these down because I'll start forgetting. I'll put C, cad yellow, light, plus phthalo blue, big TB. And then I'm going to take a little white, tint it, because you guys won't be talking like I am. This will go, you get into the groove, this will go a lot quicker. I'm going to tint that one. I didn't, mi I didn't mix it up. I want to get it mixed up nicely. And I'm going to take the same one and mix that with a little bit of the black. It 
crochet okay so there's your first green and tint and shade here's your second green so now I'm going to take I took the the uh, cool yellow and I'm going to take the warm yellow I'm going to get a little more of it oh wait before I do that I didn't do this yet I've got another one to do with the cool yellow you're going to see now this is where it kind of gets very interesting I'm going to take the cool yellow and I'm going to put it down here and I'm going to mix now my other blue the ultramarine so the ultramarine blue has a little more red in it the phthalo blue has a little more yellow so you're going to see how the ultramarine blue mixed with the yellow light is making a more of a gray type of looking green. You'll see the difference here. You'll see. See how it grayed it down? This is from the cad light and the phthalo blue. This is now from the CYL plus UB ultramarine blue. And then I'll tint and shade that one as well. A little bit of here. Just quickly do it. And then a little bit of the black. Okay, now let's go into the other yellow. And you're going to see how you've got all these different greens. So now I'm going to go into the phthalo blue, not very much, and I'm going to take half of that and I'm going to mix this is my warm yellow with the, with the uh, phthalo blue see the difference already and then I'll tint and shade that one okay I'm going to save you from watching that because you get the idea tint and shade each one of them one step and then I'm going to add the same yellow, which I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to have to clean this off pretty soon. The same yellow to my ultramarine blue. Add just a little more ultramarine to it. Once you get into this, it's actually quite therapeutic. It's just kind of quiet, and and you're learning how to mix colors. You're getting, you're seeing what they do, what what they do with the warms and cools. So there's my last green. So the so so there's all your secondary greens from your two primaries, four of them plus tint and shade. So now we've got one, two. Three, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can see how they're multiplying dramatically. And then you would go through, so basically you would add uh, <clears throat> uh, both of, both of the uh, yellows to both blues. Then you'd add both yellows to both reds for your orange, for, or you have four oranges. And, and then you would have, uh, Let's see, what's the other one? We're, we're red and blue. Then you do your red and blue for your violets. Now, this is the one I need to show you when you get to red and blue. You're going to do, well, actually it doesn't matter at this point because you're going to mix them all. What I was going to say is that the truest purple that you'll get out of these colors is your will be your ultramarine blue and your lizard crimson but that doesn't matter for you to know because you're going to mix all four purples anyway and you'll see which purple will come out the most purple when you mix your red and blues together okay so you mix your red light with both blues then you mix your lizard crimson with both blues and tint shade each one of those right you get the idea is that all of our secondary colors right so we then have our green four greens four oranges and four purples Okay, so that's that section. Okay, secondary colors. Okay, um, 
And then make sure you write down what you're mixing for each of those colors, because you'll want to come back and you're like, gosh, you know, how did I mix that? All right, now it gets really exciting. This is where we're going to start killing each other in the colors. Complementary colors. So mix together green, made from cad yellow and phthalo blue. Then mix this green color with cad red. Purple made from ultramarine blue and then grim crimson red. Then mix this purple with cad yellow. Just follow the instructions. Orange made from cad red and cad yellow. Then mix this color with ultramarine blue. So technically you can have all kinds of really beautiful grays when you mix your all complements together of both warm and cool primaries. So we're making one color out of this? Or no, it's, there's going to be several. So let me show you, let me, let me go through, I'll just go through this with you. So green made from cad yellow and phthalo blue. So first of all, I've got to make another secondary color. So that's why, if I remember what pile that was here, what was my green made from cad yellow and phthalo blue? I think it was this first one here. Anyway, let's just say it was this one. Okay, so I got some green here. Oh, that's with my that's my shade. I don't want to get into the shade. I want to get into a pure color. I'm just gonna I'm gonna capture these and I'm gonna throw them to the side a little bit. This is the point where it's probably a good idea to clean your palette. <clears throat> so I'm going to just, I'm going to try to do this down here so I can really get this picked up. And if you need to, you could go into a little bit of your Gamsol, clean off your palette. One thing that took me a lot of years to learn, and I haven't actually quite learned it yet, is really my good friend John Hughes, who's a wonderful landscape painter that teaches for us too. He he's really good at this, but he he always tries to teach and accentuate the importance of keeping the palette clean. We get all these mixtures and sometimes it's just at a point in your painting it's a good practice just to clean off and start fresh even when you're on the same painting. So that's good enough for now. Alright, let's do, let's go through this, these complementary ones and then you guys can get on this. Okay, so it says Green made from cad yellow and phthalo blue. So you've got, let's take this cadmium medium and I'm going to take the phthalo blue just a little bit. And then it says to then mix this green with cad red. So there's my cadmium red right there. I'm going to take half of it. Now you'll notice what happens to the color. It really grays it down. And if you mix an equal amount of both, you'll you'll have a real neutral color. But that's a that's sort of a kind of a real beautiful kind of a brown fall color. It's kind of a fall color, isn't it? And then take your white and tint and shade that. Well, wow, look at that one. That's what's cool about this. One of the things about this exercise is you 
we're just dealing with primaries and the secondaries. We're not even getting into tertiaries and all kinds of, so I'm going to tint that same color. That's a really beautiful one too. I'm thinking in my mind all these things these colors could could be for things I've painted. Okay, so so then I would then I would write down how I came up with that. So you guys help me out here. Oh, I need my pencil. Green and cat yellow. Okay, let's see. use that. So it was um, the green was uh, cad yellow plus TB, and I added that to cad red. cad red light. So there's my first color there with complements. And then this was the same thing. You can just go like this plus white. You don't have to rewrite it. And then go a direction like this plus black, right? Just arrows. Go arrows like that. Plus white, plus black. Now, what I'd like you to do is ex just expand that one more. Let's try it with, let's just try that same green and mix it with the other red. Mix that green with the, because you're going to notice that it's going to make a different looking And this one's really beautiful. I did this now with the other red, which is the cool red, the same green. And you look at the difference. It's got a little more color in it. And you'll see it more when I add white to it. Some of these shifts are subtle, but nonetheless, they're really interesting. And when you get to, when you get to more color, we'll see... You can see that it's a subtle shift, but but it's different. It's it's very different, and that's by using the other red with that same green, and then, and then just black and white. The black and white is giving you an extra color. Okay, so that's the same green mixed with the other red, but losing crimson. So I'd write that out plus black plus white plus black. I'm sorry, we can see the back of your head. Yeah, I'll probably get my fat head in front of the camera too much. Plus white, plus black. See? Okay, so you get the idea now. And then purple made from ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson, then add that purple to yellow. <coughs> and then orange made from cad red and cad yellow, then mix this color with ultramarine blue. I would say once you... Let's do this. I want you to expand it just one more because once you... Uh, like what I just did here. So then mix this green color with cad red and a lizard crimson, right? Then mix this purple with a lizard crimson, then mix this purple with cad yellow and cad yellow light. Orange made from cad red, then mix this color with ultramarine blue and your other blue and phthalo blue because you'll have different. All right, then black and white on each of those. Okay. <clears throat> That's it. So, <coughs> you guys have any questions? Rob? Yeah. So are we doing like all of the colors that are on the same page? So you won't have all of them yet, but just if you follow these directions, okay. we're going to, and once we, uh, later on in a couple hours, you're going to need a little time to do this. I'm going to teach you how to mix and match color. And then anything you need to finish, you'll be able to finish up for your homework. And I'll give you some exercises that, for color mixing and matching for your homework. So, so by the time you're done, yes, it's going to be a little more like this. This first section where you're doing your primaries with black and white, you're doing your secondaries with black and white, and then you're doing your complementaries with black and white. Okay? All right. Sure. Just, just whip it right out. We're going to. Oh, you... There's nothing to it. Just follow the directions and get the paint out that's telling you and mix it together and put it, put a dab up there and write out what you did.
this is uh, this is going to be very helpful and for you to understand what these colors and the different primaries of warm and cool will do when they mix with each other and with white and black very revealing all right <laughs> 